Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And now we're going to move on over. We're going to do something. I don't know which mic is hot. There we go. I'm gonna, we're going to move over and do something that Patrick Delahanty, who is our uh, programmer in residence, has apparently done many times before. It is, it is an improv kind of a thing. Yes, uh, I've done this at 45 anime conventions, and so this is the first time I'm doing it live on the internet. Uh, it's usually called Anime Unscripted, but tonight it's Twit Unscripted. And it's, if you've seen Whose Line Is It Anyway, it's a lot like that, but I've put my own little twist on some of the stuff. Introduce your uh, improvisateurs. Uh, I believe tonight we've got Mr. Justin Robert Young. Justin Robert Young! <laughs> I believe Chad has volunteered. Chad Johnson, the redhead himself. Johnson! Chad and his Johnson. Who else? Uh, are you going to join us for this? I think I'll watch. I'll sit oh, this uh, one on. out. All right. You know, I have been on the air since 4 a.m. All right, all right. I'll do it. Okay, yeah. Who else? Will Harris. Come here, Will. Will! And, and I wanted Ashley Paramore to join us as well so that we have... And Wes is going to do it. Well, you don't need me. I'm going to bow out. Okay. But let's get Ashley over here. Will, where do you go? I'll go. He's in the bathroom. Will, Will's a he's very been, popular guy. He's been vomiting ever since we told him he was going to do this. Indeed, so let me indeed, go. Indeed. Let me just go get him. Here he comes. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, from Great Britain, weighing in at 219 stone, Will <laughs> Harris. Wow. And ladies well, and gentlemen... Well, for the beauty side, know. we've got Ashley hey! Paramore, the princess herself. Get on in there. And uh, Patrick Delahanty, you're, you, do you need this microphone? Yeah. You don't even need four people? Yeah. Do you want well, you got on? five. Can you do it with five? Yeah. Well, I planned for four. <laughs> Wes, if you want to sit this one out, I you can. can. It's up to you. Or, to or Chad's this? getting out of there. Wes, sit down. Okay. okay. All right. All I'm going to get out of the way and watch. Just a second to get set up. is my Your mic is on. All right. And thirty four in thirty four minutes we're gonna count it down for the central time zone. So don't go away. We've got more champagne to spill. Uh, I'm living in the eastern time zone right now, because welcome to Twit Unscripted. <laughs> Woo! The late night, the late night improv event for Twit's New Year's Eve celebration. I'm Patrick D. I've run this anime scripted more than forty times at various anime conventions throughout the United States and Canada. But tonight we're broadcasting live to the world. Uh, for the next uh, 33 minutes or something, uh, we'll be playing a variety of improv games. Uh, there'll be some audience participa participation, so we'll definitely be looking to the chat room to help out. Uh, so let's introduce everybody. You've all got microphones, so we'll run down the light. Justin? Uh, hi, my name is uh, Justin Robert Young. Uh, I like to uh, paint nudes. Um, I am also a champion boat fisherman. Hello, uh, my name is Brian Brushwood. I'm from Austin, Texas, and uh, I'm the nicest guy with the mic. Hi, my name's Ashley Paramore, and I like to be nude and painted. <laughs> and my name is Wes Wilson. I'm from Huntsville, Alabama, and I have been acquitted. <laughs> All right. Well, my tradition to this game is to usually start with one called Let's Make a Date. This is our version of a TV dating program. And in this, Ashley, you'll be the young bachelorette looking to court one of these lovely bachelors. But they'll each have a little quirk. And so it'll be your job to try to guess what it is. And I've got them on cards here, so I'll pass them out. <laughs> and so, yeah, don't let Ashley see, but Ashley, as soon as you're ready, this one will oh, you be can very look at easy. Him, just don't look at the card. Uh, so, you can go ahead and ask him a couple of rounds of questions and see if you can guess. Hi. Hello. So, Bachelor number one. Hi, how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm great because it's Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Is it? <laughs> Do you like the football? No, I don't, but have I got something for you? We've got deals today because it's Sunday. I'm not sure I understand. What kind of deals do you have to oh, offer Oh, well, we've got this fabulous model that's on sale right here, and uh, you can get it for your $5 down and $200 a month. Oh, it's kind of hot. Do you have a notification to move on? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Bachelor number two. Hi, how are you today? Gryffindor. <laughs> so, what is your favorite thing to do on the first date? My, my favorite thing on a first date, at least it used to be my favorite thing when I was a kid before I became, you know, <laughs> was uh, my, my favorite, my favorite thing on a, what was my favorite thing on a first? Quidditch. I used to play Quidditch on a first, Quidditch, Quidditch is nothing more romantic than flying through the air and smacking someone around the head with a Quidditch. <laughs> Bachelor number three. I'm terrified of bachelor number two. If you could take me anywhere in the world, what, where, would you, where would you take me? The question isn't where I'd take you, it's how we would document where we would go, which is on perfect, beautiful devices that were simple to use, and then we would put them into a slideshow that we could seamlessly play on a device connected to our television. That's end-to-end, -end absolute, efficient beauty that would demonstrate my love for you and our love to the world. Also, I'm sleek and have one button. <laughs> you can ask another round of questions if you've got one. Bachelor number one. Yes, what can I do for you today? If you could sing me a song, what would you sing? I would sing you, come down to the dealership today. Come and check out the deals I've got for you. Bachelor number two. What's your favorite food? My favorite food? Yes. I, I don't remember because I'm so old. <laughs> but when but when I was younger when I was younger it was butter beer. Ooh. That's very nice. I like butter beer. Bachelor number 3. What? <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> what is No your favorite thing to do on the second Tuesday of every month? Well, uh, I'm actually glad you asked that. On the second Tuesday of every month, uh, me and all of my friends gather in our mock turtlenecks and blue jeans. Uh, we uh, go to a big, bright, white room with large, flat tables for which we lay out all that we prize. Uh, and then we uh, have a big silhouette as we all dance like shadows. One, two, three, take your hand and come with me cause you look so fine. Yeah, I really want to make you mine. <laughs> so that. Ashley, do you have any idea who these gentlemen are? Well, someone that's terrible at pop culture references. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna assume he's a used car salesman. Yes. I'm gonna assume he's somebody from Harry Potter because I've never read or seen any Harry Potter anything. Well, uh, would he be maybe Harry Potter? When he was... <laughs> an old Harry Potter guy? <laughs> 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 the old one, Harry Potter, he's that it. one. <laughs> Heroin yeah. That's where your mind goes. Heroin addict. <laughs> Is that in any way surprising? <laughs> no. I have no idea what you are. <laughs> really? Oh, no. This one is actually oh, see, like barely can, accurate. This is really Shame awesome. Shame uh, in public. Uh, I am a uh. worshiper at the church of Steve Jobs. <laughs> oh. And for the record, Patrick, Patrick you know, wanted me to... I actually thought to... that you were like an iPod commercial. I'm like, no, that's, that's weird. Uh, we would have been close. Uh, uh, Patrick actually wrote on the card wanting me to yell, praise Jobs. Praise Jobs. <laughs> praise and I thought it was too on the nose. I was wrong. Hey, Patrick was I've right. I've done this 45 <laughs> times. So, all right. Uh, for the next game, we're going to play something called Professor Know It All. In this game, uh, you guys are one four headed professor. Uh, the chat room will get to ask you questions, uh, but you respond one word per head at a time. 
So uh, if we could get the chat room on one of these monitors here. Uh, I'll start it off. Uh, so I'll start off with a question while we wait for the chat room to get on the monitor and get some questions up. Uh, the first question, Pro Professor, what's your biggest prediction for 2014? I will hump anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. The chat room says, uh, here we go. Uh, what's, how, how do you convert from metric? By taking my time and dividing by ladies. <laughs> by ladies? Yeah. <laughs> I like by ladies. Yeah, dog. <laughs> I think we're done with that one. <laughs> okay. uh, professor, what does it smell like in the Twit Brick House? Ooh. It can't be any thing that you've emitted from any orifice on my birthday. <laughs> and cool. scene. Uh, which is better? What? Oh, that's sad. <laughs> <laughs> one sole person. If you ever need to know what the sound of one hand clapping was, it All is right, apparently that. Our next bad. question, how can Blackberry be revived? It Tech audio. can't. <laughs> and we're done! <laughs> Alright, we'll do See, why do you need tech news today when you can have these do? Um, they're asking like yes or no questions, so. <laughs> yeah, come on, folks. Come on, chat room. Open any questions. Yeah. Can fractals tell us the nature of the universe? Yes, no, but expand on that. They. Can tell us about my herpes <laughs> aversion and whatever Justin Bieber <laughs> <laughs> emits from his orifice. <laughs> And his monkey <laughs> <laughs> likes my Spanish omelette. <laughs> Where's the one All clapping right. guy? Let's get the one <laughs> clapping guy going. All right, we'll move on to another game. In this one, you uh, you guys can stand up for this if you want, because this is weird newscasters. Hey! hey. In this, Wes, you're the anchor for the local news. Okay. Unfortunately, you're the only normal one in the bunch. Okay. Your co-anchor, Ashley, will portray an Alaskan crab fisherman. <laughs> Justin <laughs> will be the sportscaster reading the news as Alex Jones. All right. <laughs> All right. And Will will give us the weather report as someone who's aging backwards rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> so good luck with that. And oh. now your local news. Okay, excellent. Tonight we've got a wonderful special interest story. A tiny girl decided to go out and uh, sell lemonade to her neighbors and gave them anthrax instead. Uh, but, <laughs> but before we get to that, why don't we go into the sports? Well, now I'll tell you what. There is a lot of sports going on, and you will pay attention to it Ooh. at your peril because... At this moment, 
via the Dallas Cowboys RSS feed, they are controlling your mind. Who might you ask? Well, the federal government, and I don't mean the United States federal government, I do mean the New World Order for which has crawled all over Earth like a spider, which met with Jerry Jones at the build -A bear Conference in 1845 with Abraham Lincoln and the lady who did the gymnastics flip and had a Russian coach hugger at the end. They decided that we will control everybody's mind by way of RSS feed in 2013. Cowboys lose to the Eagles. Go ahead. Uh, wow, that was um, amazing. I, uh, uh, okay, well, uh, coming up next, uh, we've got the weather, but uh, we also have a great story uh, about a local group who decided to get together and uh, do some uh, community service, and they decided to revamp the park, and instead they burned it to the ground. But first, let's talk about weather. This evening, we have weather from the west coast in San Francisco. The weather will be surprisingly mild as a small mist moves in from the bay and becomes kind of a little bit funky, you know? Because as that mist gets going in the summer, they mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. love... Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It gets a little bit, you know, moist and hip. Moist. And wet! Mm -hmm. And wet! Mm -hmm. And I'm a little bit... Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit wet. Mm -hmm. and could mm -hmm. you help me, please? Because uh, I feel like... Oh, do, do, do. oh, oh, God! Don't, don't let him do that on the floor. That no, somebody put, put something on that boy. Oh God, this is terrible. Um, okay, well, um, someone's left an infant here. <laughs> Who oh, will claim oh. this infant? <laughs> uh, in, in, uh, in other news, uh, uh, Ashley, why don't you go ahead? I am not being controlled by the Illuminati right now. I, I, I don't believe you. Fishing is great. Uh, Eat fish. Mercury. <laughs> delicious. Uh, organic or inorganic? Uh, did somebody, anybody know what's going on here? Organic. Organic or you will die right now. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, the 11 o'clock show is different from the 7 o'clock show. <laughs> wow. Uh, all right. Well, we're going to move on. I've been saving this. This is actually my favorite game that we're going to do next. It's called PowerPoint Roulette. Ooh. In this game, our contestants are attempting to explain a PowerPoint presentation with no prior knowledge of what the slides are. This is my uh, I've assembled a presentation of 20 slides. We'll start with Justin, who's hey! actually done this before at Dragon Con. Uh, and he'll introduce the second person to pre present their slides and so on. Uh, whatever comes up on the screen, uh, they'll have to explain in some way how it relates to the topic. Uh, now, what I need from the chat room is something you did a school report on. So we'll see. We'll, it'll take a second. Wait, but, so uh, something something I did a school report on? Yes, yes. And so you'll have you'll start with a graph of some kind, and then there's four photos. So there's twenty. There's twenty slides. Yeah. So when you get to a graph. It's the next person's turn. Got oh, yeah. Uh, so, oh, Helen Keller, is that a good one? <laughs> <laughs> Helen Keller is the uh, is uh, that's is. The one I, saw. I don't know who that is. All that's right, not uh, very well, helpful. I'm British. Uh, you know Civil Helen Keller? You know, we can just do Civil War. Civil War is fine. Right, you know we'll what the Civil, Civil War is? Yeah. Do you know all about the Civil War? Is that yeah, doesn't matter. So. It's not going to help. If you know the Civil War or not, it's not going to help you. Just laugh a minute. Yeah. Laugh a minute stuff. All right. Uh, so, Justin, you want to give the presentation on the Civil War? Civil War. How civil was it? Not very. How? Well, I'll explain. As you can see via this graph, there are many colors. But there are only two colors that mattered in the Civil War. Black and white. How does that quantify? Well, I believe in this picture, I will illustrate it. <laughs> As you can see and illustrated with this adorable kitten wearing a chickadee cap. Most of it is white, while there are only a few black dots. This will come into clearer focus as we continue our Civil War discussion. And then you have to go for another, you have to go oh, wait, I go the whole thing? Oh, gotcha. 
What you are seeing now is the spirit of freedom. <laughs> it burned in all of us. Yes, I've been alive since the Civil War. I remember looking upon this picture as I had painted it originally and saying this is truly what we will all live when we are past this bloody escapade. Next picture. <laughs> this is an actual photo from the front line. It accompanied the following letter. Dearest Annabelle, I ride you from the front lines. There are many kids holding hands and they're wearing hand-painted masks as to show us, don't fuck with us. <laughs> Next picture. <laughs> what you're seeing is a picture from later into the skirmishes. After all the fighting, we saw many, many people going down the street as to demonstrate that they were done with such carnage. The man on the hood of the car is called Fat Pete. <laughs> Fat Pete served as a symbol for peace as he laid upon the hood of his covered wagon and said, what y'all gonna do about it? <laughs> Next slide. This is me, right? So, so what we're seeing here, uh, gang, as we look at the um, drastic effect that the Civil War had across America, from a British perspective, what you're seeing is the blue states that still had perfect English grammar by the year 1780. 1776, obviously a crucial year in uh, American independence, but by 1780, the blue states still had uh, the correct pronunciation of all appropriately British words. They still spelt uh, favor with a U. They still uh, said aluminium the correct way. Um, and all the green states had begun to slip into what we now refer to as American pronunciation, uh, including aluminum. The yellow states were basically a write-off. Next slide. <laughs> Throughout the Civil War, um, there were numerous battles, and those battles um, turned on significant events and at those significant events, there were key players. Key players in the history of Civil War, in the history of America. And what we're looking at right now is uh, Mr. Stripo. And Mr. Stripo was one of the uh, key, key generals in the uh, British push to keep the Civil War going. <laughs> just for laughs. <laughs> uh, just for the lols. Um, what you can see here is that as he took over one lane of a highway, I believe, Justin, this is the uh, I-90. Uh, I believe that as he attempted to take over one lane of the I-90, thus slowing the progress of the uh, people in the Civil War against the other people, um, <laughs> what, he, what he was doing right there was he's, he's pointing. And he's pointing, he's saying, go in the other lane. He's saying change direction, change direction because this civil war will literally rip you apart. Uh, you might say it was hot love on the hot love highway. <laughs> I wouldn't ever say that, Justin. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> of course, as we think about the American Civil War and everything that we know about it, <laughs> what becomes evident is the effect that the Civil War had on cultures around the world. What many don't realize about this epic struggle in American history was that it had uh, an increasingly important uh, impression on Japanese schoolchildren. And what we see here is the Japanese schoolgirl lifting her dress to show her stomach as if to say, I bear my stomach to you, America, as you bear your soul to me. The gentleman sitting uh, next to her has no pants on, or as we call them in England, trousers, properly. Uh, he has with no, a U. He, ha he has no trousers on, with a U, as if to say, 
I cannot... I cannot clothe myself properly whilst I feel the injustice of black oppression in the South America. Oh, <laughs> South America? <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> this slide has three very weird people and two dogs. Next slide. <laughs> uh, in, South, in the South of America, uh, as the Civil War raged on, uh, shit got real. <laughs> Things blew up. This is an amazing photo captured at the time of some shit blowing up. Next slide. Wes! <clears throat> Obviously, the Civil War had a big effect on motor vehicles in this country because they hadn't been invented yet. <laughs> and you'll notice here that uh, in the right proper region of America, uh, it was going to be another 164 years before anyone understood what an automobile would be. Uh, whereas in the real, real timely portion of America, uh, uh, they were imagining that it was going to be 330 years. This is, this is a bad graph for explaining this, so why don't we move on? <laughs> The worst well, thing, the worst thing about the Civil War was how much it affected our memories of what happened in a galaxy far, far away a really long time ago. Yeah. And as you see so here, uh, the Canadians were really invested in this <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, because they uh, were fans of Empire. And, uh, and enjoyed the British Empire and how bad of shots they were. All the Redcoats were terrible shots, uh, and uh, as were Stormtroopers. That's a terrible top. Um, Am I right? Something hey! like that. Hey! And uh, is that a bathtub? Anyway, uh, next slide, please. <laughs> um, even worse is what happened to the uh, fishermen of the era. Mm. Uh, they found themselves unable to make a reasonable profit and began throwing their fish at buildings and then um, covering them in brass. Anyway, let's move on to the next slide. <laughs> now, <laughs> there is something to be said <laughs> for the oppression of the whites <laughs> after the Civil War. They were left with nothing but their red tricycles and the endless hope of mining coins from a pretentious computer algorithm on their computers and getting much tricycle <laughs> and such dog. Uh, and uh, next slide. <laughs> but the good news is, is that after the Civil War, the justice turned full around and black people went around and burned down the buildings of all the white people. Anyway, next slide. Oh, I see. So what you're seeing now is a graph of all the buildings that were burnt down by the black people, right? Yes. 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 <laughs> What? <laughs> no, really. I think that's what it is. See the blue parts? That's what he was talking about. Yeah. See the wow, blue parts? Such racism. <laughs> I'm sorry. He started. Much racism. Much racism. <laughs> such such bigotry. Much embarrassment. <laughs> such regret. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> And as you can see, the human centipede had a lot to, to play into this. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. I believe this is also uh, a, a picture of uh, someone who has been very culturally relevant uh, to today's era. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Duck Dynasty Robertson family. <laughs> <laughs> Pre beard. Before they grew beards. Yeah. Yeah. This is them uh, saying, I don't know, how do I trap a duck and shoot it? Next slide. <laughs> um, good luck. Uh, I have no idea. But uh, tell us how this relates to the Civil War. How this relates hey, to the Civil War. 
Here's how it relates to the Civil War. The Civil War was fought with people uh, from and of Florida, which is pretty much encapsulated in that picture. Next slide. <laughs> the Civil War was stressful for everybody. Uh, none more so than that hat. <laughs> In fact, uh, that used to be a regular Kentucky Derby hat until someone snuck up behind it and said, "Boo!" <laughs> but why is there a bathroom? Also, yeah. Next slide. Next slide. <laughs> this is the end of the Civil War, where all things come together, and uh, and and rock is God. Uh, and really, God is rock. And lo, we come to our infinite question. Is rock God, and am I too drunk to be on the live stream? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the bit. Next. Ha! How, how many minutes until central time? We've got six minutes. I don't think we've got enough time to do another We have five and a half minutes. And come I don't on, know we get five and a half minutes of improv. Come on, Patrick. I don't, five and a half minutes of improv. Come no, on, one more. How about this? How about this? All right, here. Everybody, let's go ahead. Uh, let's get a big round of applause for Patrick Delahendi for putting this together. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But you can find out more at animeunscripted.com. So uh, listen, check number that one, out. he does this with professionals, unlike um, yeah. me. It's usually voice uh, actors. Yeah, no, real actual actors. funny people. If you ever see this on a convention schedule, make your point to go see that. Uh, I believe uh, we have Brian Brushwood coming up after this. It's magic time. It is. Guys, uh, we're mildly amusing, so thank you yeah. very much. Uh, I really, emphasis uh, on mildly. Time. Mildly. Let's very go mildly. Ahead and italicize <laughs> mildly. You're, you're exhausted. You're drained. You've been we're here drunk. since 4 a.m. No, wait a minute. That's me. All right, let's, uh, let's go over here because we're going to find some magic. We've got magic to do, you and me. We've got magic to do, and through and through. Uh, I'm sorry. It's, it's Channel Pippin.